We who are the church love Mary, our mother and mother of the church. Certainly, as a young boy, one of the first prayers that my mother taught me and my sisters was the Hail Mary. It's an amazing thing to communicate to a young child the whole idea of God and who God is, and yet it gets done with the help of God's grace. But we learn right away the important role that Mary plays in the unfolding of God's plan of salvation. It was her yes to the angel's message that she would become the mother of God that enabled God's plan to continue to its wondrous effect in that we are now freed from our sins and the possibility of a life that never ends burns brightly for each one of us. There are a growing number of celebrations of Mary in the church's liturgical calendar. This one has to be about the most recent. The church first started celebrating Mary as mother of the church as an obligatory memorial in 2018, three years ago. Because the church came to awareness that this was so proper that we should celebrate Mary under this title, under this truth. And the feast of Mary, mother of the church, is always celebrated on the Monday after Pentecost to show Mary's close connection to the church, which is the body of Christ, her son. In our first reading today, taken from the Acts of the Apostles, we see Mary at prayer with the Apostles while waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Prayer was the vital preparation that was needed for the birth of the church. Prayer was needed to have the courage and strength to witness to Jesus' resurrection and to bring the church into existence by the proclamation of the good news that Jesus not only died, but he's risen from the dead and is glorified at the right hand of his heavenly Father. Now Mary, of course, is the first one to have the gospel proclaimed to her at the Annunciation. If you know the prayer of the Angelus, it tells that story. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done to me according to thy word. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The mystery of the incarnation. Traditionally played, uh, prayed at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. She was the first to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We are told so in the Gospels. And that brought about the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, and the Savior of the human race. Now, Mary shares yet again in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to bring about the birth of the church on Pentecost, which is the body of Christ, through her confident waiting in prayer for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now in the Gospel from the 19th chapter of John, Jesus gives his mother to St. John, his closest companion in life. Mary is given to us, too, as our mother. We belong to Christ, and thus we belong to each other. Represented by St. John, joined together as the church, the body of Christ. And this truth challenges each one of us to care for one another. 
in good times and in bad. Christ invites us to give in this way every day by showing patience, by doing extra work, by being filled with empathy and feeling for others. It is our work to do well, for we are given to each other to walk through this life together. As we approach the end of the academic year, I believe that this sense of caring has been the game plan for our school leaders and our teachers, and, I might add, our students. COVID-19 has been a big disruption. I don't have to give you examples of that. You know it full well, especially those of you who have been in a school since August. But during recent visits to our schools, I have been struck by how normal everything seemed. Yes, people were wearing masks, people were washing their hands a lot or using the hand sanitizer, people were keeping their distance, but how you might even say relaxed things were. What a gift. The teachers and students went about the work of teaching and learning easily and naturally. I was so happy for the students and grateful to the principals and faculties because in-person learning is so important. Students need to interact with their teachers, with their best friends, with their classmates. That's part of learning too. And our schools have been doing just that since August. A marvelous accomplishment. I am proud of the way our schools transitioned to virtual learning last spring. Within a day. That could not have been easy. That must have been chaotic. but you stepped forward and did what needed to be done. I'm grateful for the long hours that principals and teachers and our Office of Catholic Schools spent during this past summer. During this past summer. To ensure a safe, and prudent return to in-person learning last August. No one of our students was left behind during virtual learning. No one of our students has been left behind this year. Our schools were ready and well prepared for the start of the year because of your dedication and your hard work. I want to express my praise and gratitude for the work of our pastors, our chaplains, our school leaders, and our teachers for a job well done, and the cooperation of our parents and students. Of course, educating the young, as you know and believe, is more than a job. You are not simply professionals though professionals you are. Your orchestration of the process of learning in a faith-filled environment is a ministry of service in the church where we make sure that children come first. To our parents, I say that in making sacrifices, to sending your children to a Catholic school. Know that you as parents, as the first and foremost educators of your children in the ways of faith, in addition to the other ways they must learn, 
are giving your children the opportunity to be successful, not only in the measurement of this world, but to be successful in things that matter the most. Knowing God, loving God, serving the Lord with a joyful heart while discovering the Lord's place in our lives. On this special celebration of Mary as mother of the church and as our mother, Let us remember that as we belong to her, and even more profoundly to Jesus, her son, we are to care for each other, to walk with those who are entrusted to our care. May God give us this grace. Amen.